TRS Clips, the place you arrive at if you just want the best bits of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. Subscribe, hit that bell icon. Have you had conversations with older couples who yeah. have had successful relationships? Because I do this a lot. Yeah. I have some insights, but I'd love to hear yours first. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like what what goes right? It's very interesting. It's like a uh, I've I've spoken to my grandparents. I've spoken to um, a couple of very close family friends that I have who are uh, both in their sixties. Beautiful relationship. They travel around the world. Deeply in love. Um, sexually active, mm. which uh, was interesting to me. And we had that level of conversation. You know, we were very open with each other and we spoke about it. And the way they said was, we are nothing like the people that we were when we first met. We met at twenty one. we fell in love and since then they've had two kids they're successful they both have their own companies one is a doctor another runs a, one runs her own company and we have completely changed if we meet today i don't know if we will fall in love but we have all this history before us and we have constantly kept communicating kept communicating and it is like a mixture of compromise and independence like i will be independent but i will also let you be independent and we will be together mm. so it's a i don't think there is a one line answer to how to be successful in a relationship i think it's a lot of hard work but it's beautiful to talk to somebody who's made it yeah again it's also coming from the conversations i've had on the show mm-hmm. but a lot of conversations i've had offline like mm-hmm. my whole life is a podcast honestly uh, but uh, the insight i got is one every relationship is subjective so as much as you try putting rules yeah. uh, against it these are just sort of it's it's good guess work that's what yeah. i'll say it's like likely that these rules will work right. two uh, i read a business insider article once which said that according to science and i don't know how true this is and mm-hmm. i'll link it down below mm-hmm. there's supposed to be three signs of a successful long term relationship the first sign is overlooking the other person's flaws convincing yourself that those flaws aren't important to you or they don't exist the second was over highlighting the good stuff that oh this person's voice this person's mm-hmm. uh, intelligence the way they look at this the like you know traits about them mm-hmm. that you can really glorify in your own head mm-hmm. uh and the third one i believe was what you said independence mm-hmm. and this is what i've picked up in common with all the couples i've spoken to that they just let each other be mm-hmm. there's no element of i want to make you better i want to change you i'll help you level up so i think i read this quote once which said something like um the person you're dating right now if you're thinking of marrying them and expecting that they'll change or your bond will evolve don't do that because right. whatever it is now can you copy paste that on the rest of your life and mm. will you be happy copy pasting that this version of this person mm. if they're just this will you be okay with it wow so uh that got me thinking that and and the the key here is independence i mm. met mansoor khan amir khan's cousin right. who now lives outside kunnur mm. uh at the fringes of a forest to get to his house you have to take three four kacha rastas and each rasta is more kacha than the previous one mm. he is living in wilderness has to go inside his house at 6 pm because leopards can come out oh. beautiful house beautiful levels of happiness mm. beautiful energy inside the house and his wife sitting there and reading her own thing wow. okay he is reading his own thing mm. and i asked him how did you do this so many couples in urban centers are getting divorced and right. you've been married for like 30 years right he's like man i think we just let each other be mm. so I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "We don't try changing each other. We've always been like that. We let the other person evolve on their own journey. We accept each other." Yeah, and I said, "That's the key. That's the that's the ultimate, where you can grow without being threatened." Mm. Right. So, what do we want? We want to grow. There's no doubt about it. All of us want independence. We want to be able to do whatever we want. Why can't we do it alone? There's no really good reason, but we want also at the same time. the support of somebody with us right but somehow the price for having that person with us is to compromise on your growth mm. that seems to be the narrative that has built up that compromise to karna hi hai eventually once the relationship is strong enough there is no threat of the other person going away and now you can actually let each other evolve and grow into whatever direction that you want but initially it is more difficult because what if you grow in a way that the other person doesn't like and they still have that option of breaking off the relationship it is like this dance between comfort and growth mm. and in which direction do you go if you go too fast in one direction you may regret it 
so that's why this communication is so important because you need to keep on sharing keep on talking about listen this is where i'm going what's up with you where are you mm. you know that that uh, back and forth has to be there that uh, article that you read i kind of disagree with the first point though um, ignoring somebody's flaws i don't think is a gr- great idea mm. I, th- um, i think the i'll rephrase it i think it was physical flaws like ah. it was small physical things not ah. like if someone's toxic yeah <laughs> 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 you know he'll change <laughs> i can make him better i can make her better yeah. i think it was like tiny like physical things that's what they were trying to highlight so the beautiful thing is that the brain already does that for you okay that's what falling in love is mm mm-hmm. when yeah. you fall in love and say you have 10 characteristics out of which seven are great three are my brain will just be like ye teen ko hata dete mm. and let's pull up the seven to make it look like 15 mm. and just give you that this is the story that the prefrontal cortex builds this is what happens in the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex just believes it and amplifies it yeah okay i'll tell you why i ask you this one because we spoke about casual encounters and your body releasing more oxytocin mm. all that mm. okay I'm sure that if you have sex repeatedly with the same person and share trauma, share experiences with the same person, it's got to be more hormones at play. Mm-hmm. You know, and and chances are, if you are actually having a nice, stable relationship, like when nothing's really going too wrong, mm-hmm. which is random because every relationship something goes wrong and you have to get Correct. past it, which is called Correct. getting past trauma. Mm-hmm. But I'm assuming that hormonally also you're very bonded, yeah. like over a long period of time. Yeah. So in long term love is there any like hormonal studies done like where I th- I think it was something like they scanned uh, people's brains mm-hmm. um and they saw that when they showed them a picture of their partner uh certain parts of the brain were much more activated than others Yeah absolutely so uh, when I spoke about the airline pilot study right? mm. so a higher level of baseline oxytocin means that at the baseline you are already feeling more content like you're more contented in life right you are you are experiencing less threat the higher the oxytocin levels uh the less stressed out you are which is the actual motivation behind finding love correct and i want to get away from my own stress hmm yeah that's that's effectively so um uh, the the actual f- motivation is happening so deep down um that we are not even aware of why do we want to find someone Mm. So when you ask a single person why do you want why are you looking for somebody they will say whatever story they have created mm. but that real reason is coming from a place that is so deep down in their brain that you can't even access it you don't even have the words for it it is just like this impulse like why are you eating uh oh, i'm hungry hunger is the word that you've created but then it that at the molecular level it is coming down from such a deep place that it's just khana hai. Mm. it's just like that like you you want to look for somebody even if you say that you don't our brains are still looking and that is where sometimes there can be a conflict mm. that what is it that you really want mm. wow this baseline oxytocin thing is new mm.